Welcome to a short tutorial on how to benchmark your system, especially your CPU, with Cinebench R15. If you are looking for a tutorial on the new version, R20, check the link in the info cards in the upper right hand corner. Obviously, the very first thing you want to do is download Cinebench R15. Unfortunately, you cannot download it anymore from Maxon, the creator of this benchmark tool. I suggest going to guru3d.com. The direct link is also in the description of the video, in case you're too lazy to search for yourself. Which I can totally understand though. After you've downloaded it, you can unzip it to a folder of your choice. It might take a little while longer, not because of the size, but the amount of files that need to be unzipped. Now go to the folder you unzipped Cinebench R15 to and launch the EXA file, which is called Cinebench Windows 64-bit. There might even be a 32-bit version of it around in the depths of the internet, but I expect you to have a 64-bit system anyway. After launching it, you will receive a software license agreement, which you can either read or not. Simply accept it and continue. At the top, there are two run options, which we will get to later in detail. The first one is OpenGL, which is for your graphics card, and the second one is obviously for your CPU. You can also see a ranking down below, where common systems from the time of creation of the benchmark are listed with their respective scores. I recommend now going to File and select the Advanced Benchmark option. Once you've done that, you can see that you have a CPU and a CPU single core run option. CPU stands for the multi-core test. You can also go to Preferences and select the number of threads your CPU is going to use. The English language version is the only one of this program by the way. Once you go to File and run all benchmarks, all three benchmarks meaning OpenGL, CPU, Multi-Core and CPU Single Core will be run. You can see that there is a rather ugly looking car chase scene which tries to stress your GPU. These days this GPU benchmark is not appropriate anymore. I highly suggest using Fermark, which we also have a link for in the info cards. The next test is the multi-core, which I will simply fast forward. The next one is the single core test, which I will also fast forward. Both are basically rendering the same image and you would expect that the multi-core test runs a lot faster and scores higher than the single core test. Once all benchmarks are finished, you can check the scores which are displayed on top and also, in case it's a higher score, can be found in the ranking section on the lower left hand side. It should be noted though that the results of Cinebench R15 are not comparable to Cinebench R20. However, you can look up how your system scored on Cinebench R15 compared to other systems. You can either google individual results or for instance go to CPU Monkey and check the multi-core results and single core results. For my rather old 4790K a score of 850 on multi-core is optimal, for a single core it should be around 160 to 170. I scored way lower with my current system with 690 points on multi-core and 122 on single core, simply because I'm recording which takes up roughly 10 to 20% of CPU power. Another note on the OpenGL GPU benchmark, you should not take this benchmark serious because the program is rather old and new GPUs like my GTX 1080 are not really stressed out, hence the almost perfect percentage. Cinebench R15 is a good way to measure your CPU in single and multi-core performance, the GPU version is not what it used to be anymore. Other benchmarks like Fermark or 3DMark are more appropriate. Also, once again I would like to stress that the results of Cinebench R15 and Cinebench R20 are not comparable. We hope you found this video helpful, leave a like if you liked it, comment with your score and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.